something pressing. And I remember in the news after our show yesterday, the big federal news was kind of uh, Justin Trudeau uh, at the European Parliament and uh, him kind of getting lambasted. And, you know, that's that's not what we're talking about now. But I thought this was just as timely and interesting. And it was the uh, leader of the opposition in Queen's Park, that is the provincial parliament. And they were talking about Northern Ontario. And they were talking about health care in Northern Ontario. And um, a quote from Andrea Horvath. She said, I think everyone would agree that every Ontarian deserves access to timely health care when and where they need it. But for far too long, health care has not been equitably accessible in the north. Alarm bells have been going off for some time now. And the thing that they're kind of pointing to is a lack of personnel. So it's not necessarily a lack of money or a lack of machines, which can be transported easily. It's a lack of trained nurses, physicians, specialists uh, that we just lack up here. Yeah, we. Uh, but is this a new, is this a new phenomenon as far as you know? Um, no, or is this no, something that, we've been that's dealing kind of with? Part of the problem. It's kind of an ongoing thing, and uh, it seems like the solutions range from, in my opinion, you know, smart and insightful to super basic and uh, not helpful. So. Provincial Parliament's great. It's like a dialectic conference where everyone can kind of put in their information, what they think, and then the best solution hopefully is brought to the brought to the top, the cream, right? Yeah, exactly. And I hope we can get to the solution of that because it is an ongoing uh, problem. I remember my father being in in the hospital here. He had cancer really bad, and uh, and so. He had a lot of pain in his back, and uh, and they had him in a bed in the hallway for the longest time, and it was packed. And this was before the pandemic, before them mm-hmm. talking about how hospitals were packed. We we had a bed shortage uh, way before that, if people have any memory, right? So this is an ongoing problem we've had for for some time now. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, solutions again. This is where this is open uh, for people who have solutions. We love to to take people's ideas and you never know uh, the collective can sometimes uh, you know influence those people who are in decision making positions and uh, yeah find solutions yeah because money money does solve a lot of problems just everything throwing throwing (laughs) more money at a problem doesn't always fix it no you know this is one of those cases where it's a human issue um, maybe enough, you know, if you threw enough money at it, it would start to resolve itself. But it's uh, doesn't seem like normal methods of uh, of supply and demand are really going to end this problem. And and it could become more of a problem as the baby boomer generation ages. They've mm-hmm. been talking about that for decades now. Like they've seen this trend coming because population uh, had a sharp spike during the baby boomers. And it hasn't been that high since. So there's not going to be replacement numbers of nurses and physicians and as these people want to move on with their life to retirement and such. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's definitely going to affect, uh, you know, look, I don't know, but it's politics, right? And this is where we're hearing this from. It's it's They're always playing. Yeah. Seems like people play politics and it gets in the way of some just practical solutions a lot of times and uh and 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 hopefully we can get over things like that and and just get down to what's important to people. And that would be healthcare. I think everyone should be entitled mm-hmm. to good mm-hmm. healthcare and Northern Ontario is no different in that way. 